Virtual Soundcheck has changed the way that we train volunteers and prepare for our services. There's no doubt that it has improved the quality of what we do. Virtual Soundcheck allows you to record your rehearsal or even your Sunday and then play it back later so that all the instruments show up on their individual channels as if the band were live on stage. This obviously allows you to tweak and train until your heart's content. So now I'll show you how to set up your Pro Tools session to record all these tracks. So the first thing we'll do is create 48 mono audio channels because that's how many inputs we have coming from our stage rack. To do this, use Shift Command N to bring up the new track dialog. We want 48 tracks. It's already set to mono audio, so hit enter. And we have our 48 tracks. Now the next thing we want to do is set up our inputs and outputs for these tracks. The inputs are already sequential, 1 through 48, and that will record the corresponding preamp from the stage rack. The outputs, however, need to be changed. The outputs should always match the input for that particular track. So the easy way to do this is to go to the first channel, hold down Option and Command, and then click on the output, select 1, and now all of your outputs are sequential, just like your inputs, and they're all matched up. So you're ready to go for recording your 48 inputs from your stage rack. Now, if you want to record some additional channels, like your board mix or anything coming in the front of house line inputs, you'll need to use what's called assignables. So to do this, the first thing we'll do is create a track for our board mix. Shift Command N, and we want a stereo track this time. If you hold Command down and press the right arrow, it will make that stereo. Go ahead and create that, and it's on the far right over here. Now, for the input on this, we need to choose an assignable. I'm actually going to use assignable 9 and 10, and then I'll need to set my output to be the same thing. And now that's ready to go. Now, if you want to record some front of house inputs, the easy way to do this is create some channels. I'll go ahead and create four mono tracks for that. And then you can see it already assumed that we wanted to use assignables here. And they're assignable 1 through 4, but we need to change our outputs. Now to do this, we only want to change outputs on the selected channels. And they're already selected here, uh, indicated by the white highlighting. So what we'll do is we'll add shift to the option and command. And then choose our output here. And we want that to be assignable 1 will be the first one. And then it will number them sequentially. So now those are all ready. Now, if you want to name your inputs, which can be useful, um, there are a couple little tricks in that. Just double click on the name here, and then we'll just name this kick. And instead of hitting OK or even clicking Next, you can hold down Command and hit the right arrow, and it will take you to the next track. You can name it, and you just keep using the Command and your left and right arrows to move back and forth between channels. So that can definitely save some time. Now we move on to the venue side of things and show you how to set up your inputs and outputs there. Now that we're on the venue, you shouldn't really have to do much with your inputs if they're coming from the stage rack. Now if you only started off with maybe 32 inputs from your stage rack, and so you only set up 32 channels in Pro Tools, and then later you decide to add channels, just make sure that you add a channel in Pro Tools and patch its inputs and outputs to the corresponding stage input for that channel on the venue. So if you create a new channel in the venue, and let's say it goes into stage input number 41, make sure in Pro Tools you have a channel whose input and outputs are set to 41. So that's pretty simple for that. Now let's talk about what to do if you're using inputs from your front of house rack and you have to use assignables. Our loop channels come from the front of house rack. So I'll show you how we patch that to make sure it gets recorded in Pro Tools. So the first thing we do is we have our loop channel up here and then we'll use our direct output to send it to Pro Tools. So if we click on the little double arrow here, it'll take us to our patch bay. Now on the patch bay, you want to make sure that you have your Pro Tools tab selected here. And then on the loop channel, select 1 and 2. And now that's ready to go. But the one thing you have to do is make sure you turn the direct out on. And you can do that here on the patch bay view, or if you go back to your input view, you can click the little button beside the direct out. And that has to be on or else it won't get recorded in Pro Tools. And of course, we had already set up channels in Pro Tools set to HDX Assignable 1 and 2 so that the loop will get recorded. Now, the only tricky part about this 
is when you flip back into HDX mode so that you can remix things, you'll need to change the input on the loop channel so that it is assigned to Pro Tools 1 and 2. You can see here that it's currently assigned to Front of House 1 and 2. If I go to the Pro Tools tab, I would need to assign it to HDX Assignable 1 and 2 and then click again to confirm. And now it's ready to remix. But then when you flip back over to your stage inputs to mix a live show, you'll have to flip this back to the front of house rack inputs one and two. So that's pretty easy to forget. I do it often. Um, so make sure you do that. All right, now let's talk about recording your board mix into Pro Tools. There are a couple ways you can do this. You can record the main output of the console or you can record a matrix or a PQ feed. Now I normally do a PQ because it lets me add some crowd mics in and it also lets me boost my talking and video levels. So the best way to do this is select the PQ that you want to record. So for me, that'll be my CD player. And this is the feed that also feeds my CD burner. And then instead of using a direct out, this time I'll just patch the output just like if I were patching it to an output on the stage or my front of house rack. So I'll click up here at the top and then I'll go down and select the Pro Tools tab and assign it to outputs nine and 10 and you're good to go. So now that all of your patching is done, the only thing you need to do is not to flip between stage and HDX mode. So to do that, just go to your options menu. You have to be in config mode. And then in the input section, you just tell your console if you want to listen to the stage rack or the HDX card, which is Pro Tools. And then when you flip back and forth, you'll have to reboot the console and it'll take a minute. So just be prepared for that if you're in a hurry. A couple of other quick notes about virtual sound check mode. You can make gain changes while you're in HDX mode. And then when you flip back over to look at your stage racks for a live performance, the venue will ask you if you want to apply your gain changes to your stage rack. And most of the time you're going to say yes, because you want your gain to be actually turned up when you go back into stage mode. Now there is one tricky little part about this. There could be a problem if you go from HDX mode to stage mode and then back to HDX mode. Here's the deal. If you change your gain while in HDX mode the first time, apply those gain changes to your stage rack when you flip into stage mode, and then you go back to HDX mode to mix on the track some more, you'll probably have some gain structure issues. Here's what happens. When you're in HDX mode and you make a gain change, it's making a digital gain change. When you flip back to stage mode and you apply those gain changes, it actually changes the preamp's gain and forgets the digital changes. So the problem comes in when you go back to HDX mode for the second time using the same tracks because the console doesn't know that there should be digital gain changes so your gain structure will be wrong. Fortunately, there's an easy workaround. Here's what I do. I have a special HDX show file. So after I finish mixing in HDX mode, I'll store my show there and then I'll flip over to stage mode, apply my gain changes and store it under my normal live show setting. Okay, so then if I decide to come back and mix again, I'll load the HDX show, not the live show. Now, it's important that if you flip back over to stage mode after making changes the second time around in HDX mode, you don't want to apply your gain changes this time because it'll turn your preamps up or down even more. So that should keep you clear if you just use two shows, an HDX show and a stage mode show. And this is normally not a big problem. It's only if you flip back and forth a lot.